Hello and welcome back to another tips video. Today this one is going to be about receptive fingerspelling or understanding someone else's fingerspelling. I'm going to go over where you should look when someone is fingerspelling to you, um, how you should start learning receptive fingerspelling versus how advanced people do it, and I'll talk a little bit about skipping letters and why people skip letters and um, why they don't always spell the full word. Uh, so the first one is where to look. Um, generally, when you're watching someone sign, you should be looking at their chin or mouth area. Um, when you're watching someone finger spell, it's, it's very similar. Um, you want to look between their mouth and where their finger spelling. So if they're finger spelling over to the right, you want to look between their mouth and where their finger spelling, kind of in the middle, so you can catch both what their hand is doing and what their lips are doing if they're mouthing the word. If they're on the left, similarly, you would look a little bit over to the left side. You look about here. So you can catch what their lips are doing if they're mouthing the word. Some people do, some people don't. Um, you'll notice in my videos, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, that's just to expose you to uh, the range that's out there. <clears throat> If they're spelling, finger spelling down lower, you would look just kind of in between, uh, but at mostly the chin. So you can catch what both the mouth is doing, if they're mouthing. If they're not mouthing, you can look more at the hand <coughs> um, and what the hand is doing. Um, the next thing I want to talk about today is when you're first learning to finger spell, you're really going to be concentrating on those letters, on what letters are being made by the hand. <clears throat> um, so let's say we go through dog. We're going to see, okay, that's a D. Okay, O, and then G. Your mind is going to go through those kind of steps of D-O-G. Okay, what's that spell dog? As you get more and more advanced, you're going to be looking less at the letters and more at the shape of the word. So up, neutral, and then to the left, that's usually dog. And so some people will spell it just DG, DG, because that's the shape that the word is making. Um, so as you start, you're going to be looking for those letters. You're going to try to pick out each individual letter. But as finger spelling gets faster and as your brain gets more receptive to being able to understand finger spelling, you're going to start wanting to look at the shape of the word rather than each individual letter. And consequently, that's how people will mouth words. Um, they're not going to mouth D-O-G for dog, they're going to mouth dog. Dog. So when you're looking at the mouth and looking at the shape of the word, you kind of want those to be similar. <clears throat> um, and so like the mouthing matches what I thought he was spelling, so that's probably what he was spelling. <clears throat> the third part is, there are three reasons, three main reasons why people skip letters when they're finger spelling. The first one is called lexicalization. So that is adding movement to fingerspelling for specific words. Um, one example is burn. You won't often see people spelling the word the way you're used to it, B-U-R-N. You will mostly see the lexicalized version, which is this, B and then N. B upside down or flat, and then up and to a regular N. So maybe bun but there's no R there. There's no crossing of the fingers. So that's just something you have to learn. Um, there are a set number of them. Not all words are lexicalized. Um, that's just part of the language that you do have to uh, kind of memorize and learn. Um, but if somebody spells something that you don't understand, simply ask, well, what is that? What does that mean? Um, and they should be willing to explain to you especially if it's a more advanced concept. Another reason for missing or skipping letters is just advanced finger spelling speed. Uh, for example, if I spell enter, I-N-T-E-R, if I do it quickly, if I do it, how about intern, how about that, intern, if I do it quickly, there's no E, I-N-T, and then I go to R-N. The E is in between the, the T and the R. I-N-T-E-R-N. There's no real formed E when I spell it. 
So just for the sake of speed and uh, hand optimization of movement, um, sometimes letters are just skipped. And so there's not many other words with I-N-T-R-N. In turn, uh, in turn, eh, maybe. But uh, a lot of the time you'll be looking at the context uh, of what something is spelled in. So we have a new finger spelled something that came to work with us this week. Probably not going to be in turn with a U, it's probably going to be in turn with an E, in turn. Um, <clears throat> and the third reason why some people skip letters or do incorrect letters in their finger spelling is deaf people aren't always the greatest spellers. English is usually um, a deaf person's second language. So English isn't always their strongest language. Um, so I've gotten some very strange finger spellings before, uh, especially with medication names. A lot of times you will get something like the first two or three letters of a word, especially if it's a long word, you'll get, well, let's say, ibuprofen. They'll go IB and then there's a bunch more letters <laughs> and I don't know what they are. You'll get that a lot. Um, and so you kind of have to have a, a little bit of a back and forth. Is it a medication? What's it for? When do you take it? What does it do? Um, stuff like that to figure out what they're trying to tell you. Um, sometimes they'll just be completely incorrect. I've gotten Tylenol spelled as T-Y-R-O-B-L before. Um, and I took about two or three minutes to what exactly is T-Y-R-O-B-L because that's not an English word. Um, so sometimes you just have to talk with them about it. Um, if you see a letter that's missing or skipped and or you, you're sure you got all the letters but they don't spell a word, it's one of those three options and you have to kind of just have a little back and forth with the person and figure out what exactly they were trying to say. So I hope these tips help you. Have a great day.